What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. It's Fury here and I have a special video for you guys today. This one covering the March 2021 PvP tier list and the old one didn't come out that long ago. This one at least has had two weeks to mature so we can finally look at how the dust has settled and how an entire tier just got slashed off as well as how tier Vivian came to be. So stay tuned because we're starting now. I wanna be immortal, like a god in the sky, I wanna be a silk flower. It's always important to take a look at how these things break down. Uh, this tier list, of course, is the representation of the end game meta. So these are teams that are deploying full L5 characters as well as multiple characters from the upper tiers. Now, while characters from tier one and below may also be deployed, you're always going to want to be looking forward to preparing your team to fight characters from tier zero and up. And as the meta just settles into this heavy sustain, you're going to notice real quick that your options are sometimes limited, but you know, you can get creative at all times. You're going to notice a lot of fluctuation between the early and mid game. Some characters that were originally in tier three are very viable in those positions, but they do fall off. Also, there is the release of Apate, as well as, you know, the recent release of Mika and Von Helsing. Those are still a little too early to really quantify. And as well as the release of an antique called Deception, which is now the fastest and very considerable when trying to fight in the Speed Wars. Tier 3 was slashed, by the way, because we wanted people to kind of tend to focus towards the higher tier characters just because of how PvE has sort of settled and as well as how grueling the PvP endgame meta has become. A lot of characters from tier 3 and below just did not fight well with how HP and HP percent damage has become the go-to form of winning games. Tier Vivian came to be uh, just from herself. She really was the breakout star, but we'll get more into that here soon. Additionally, I do also want to emphasize that the tier list follows definitions. Tier zero being your most meta defining, your most powerful characters that you want to have on your team. They will be the centerpiece and the foundation going forward. Tier one, the extremely powerful girls, do need a little bit of planning you, know, you do need to look at how they're geared up of course um they will be very powerful in almost any setup that you bring but do keep in mind that they do need just a tad bit of planning you need to have some direction tier 1.5 is the middle ground here you can see rogue and joan um where they certainly need some planning you should back them up support them give them a compliment wherever you can uh, they will shine for you, but of course, with more direction, you're going to have to plan these out. And tier two are the strong girls that do require synergy, even multiples in some cases. So you're going to want to plan this out a lot. Um, a lot of these characters you do not tend to see often in the very late game, but players do tend to build them and they shine pretty well. Um, so we'll be getting to those here shortly. Of course, let's dive in. We are all excited about how Vivian became the breakout star in this season. Vivian is just able to exert a ton of pressure um, on the opponent, as well as maintain control and keep your team clean and healthy from debuffs. Her healing potentials uh, from the active skill are incredible. The disruption from her passives, just being able to remove speed and energy from the enemy is very annoying and very hard to deal with and on top of that she has access to the strongest class gear set that's the preset which allows you to remove more debuffs or add additional healing to your team when you plan out your vivian teams you're likely going to find yourself using heal and hp builds as well as speed builds um, that may use deception so do definitely keep that in mind. People can deploy two, three, four, even six of these and have them be incredibly annoying. Um, most of the time you'll find yourself countering Vivians with more Vivians or our new breakout star, which allows us to transition into Apate. 
she very recently released she was very um very much expected to be a meta changer girl and of course she is at the top of the tier zero because she's able to somewhat circumvent um vivian because even if apate is removed by the links she will revive she does take a little bit of conditions to revive but that still makes her incredibly annoying her energy draining active skill is something to look out for you're definitely wanna, gonna want to have energy on this girl um so she's able to disrupt the opponent's active skills to the best of her ability having her built around your excursion speed slot is very important now that damage she is able to one shot and bypass l5 shields at some points um and it only scales off of her attack and the enemy's energy moving on next over here to nephilim she is still lingering around here on the tier zero ever since her release very tanky character she's very fast and is very resistant to enemy damage thanks to her high dr and can also be equipped with queen um not the queen's crown what's what's it called eternal dawn for even more depletion that'll have her lingering around the field throwing out a lot of damage from her passives the equilibrium marks punishing opponents using their active skills in the end of round damage punishing girls that bring high attack what's very important to note is that that end of round trigger does attach healing debuffs to the enemies so that's one piece of the puzzle that you can use for combating vivians keep that in mind and then there is the solo vivian which is still very powerful with how much pressure she exerts on the opponent with how much healing and debuff removal she does for your team you may want to consider using her with an energy antique and as much as much hp as possible especially when running a solo one and of course she still has access to the priest gear set healing or more debuff removal will be your go-to next i do want to dive into your tier one characters these are incredibly powerful and at the top of this list so far, it's coming down to Raphael. Of course, with how Nephilim and Vivian's are at the very top, Raphael benefits this a lot. Vivian has a built-in passive attribute that allows her to increase the healing she receives by 25%. So Raphael will be having incredible heals if you stack her attack build her for a sort of suicide build where she can go down not too early but early enough to be able to keep your characters healed on top of the enemy's galaxy links do note that nephilim does spread out the healing debuffs but with your own vivians you may be removing those pretty quickly so stacking as much attack on her using echoes using umbrella using full attack potentials you can build her for speed but at the most most of the time you want to have her somewhere over 300,000 attack and you're mainly going to be using attack attack echoes umbrella to get to this point next up is kratos probably the best damage dealer we have for the long games since most matches are stretched out uh, most of the time five plus eight plus ten plus rounds even going further in the elite league you'll notice you're going past 15. kratos is very good at stacking up her attack um being able to survive with her built-in healing to be able to take over matches as girls start to be defeated um she'll be able to focus on the lowest attack characters uh Ap comes to mind since he's usually built for speed attack Kratos can definitely tag her with her terrorize and you know stop her for a whole round. So building Kratos for speed is going to be the key to keeping her on top of the enemy's team. You can have your Kratos at the moment be faster than Apate by putting her in your excursion slot. As I was giving her echoes, deception, maybe having some class gear set for her, and then of course speed HP. You can use a tanky kratos as well and these would be built with umbrella eternal dawn and just really focus on hitting towards the end of the round any girls that took damage that's one strategy to build around uh, next you're gonna have your psychic who is always the anti-meta girl uh, she just never leaves tier one tier zero um until now finally 
Stunning is still making an impact. You can definitely slow your opponent's team down for a whole round. Um, it's not as lingering anymore since if a Vivian did get her totem off, the stunts can be removed. Um, but it still slows down the enemy, makes the enemy take more damage, reduces her armor, um, and is able to carry the Priest class set. So you have more healing and debuff removal. That's something very important to recognize with these Priest characters. So keep that in mind. Next up is Sky, who has not been making much of an impact yet just because of her limited availability. But where she has been used, along with Apatase, making Vivians even faster, making the Phylons even faster. She definitely leaves a mark, and it's definitely hard to catch up to her. She's always got her pedal to the metal. So, Sky just increasing the allies' speed by 80, and as well as disrupting the enemy girl's speed with her uh, Noaxia marks, um, just makes it very annoying to try and keep up and position the priority of how your characters move along. Keep that in mind, there was still more testing going on with her, and we'll see how she continues to impact the meta. You can build her tanky, or you can build her with speed. Um, those are going to be your, your best options. Up next, Fenrir, um, still doing fantastic since her release as well. She benefits a lot from being able to block um, follow-up attacks or assists, and I'm looking at Joan and his Anami here specifically. Um, she will sit in the front, boost herself uh, with each active, as well as then do HP% percent damage to the enemy team every time she makes 3 blocks. She will also heal herself and that keeps her in the game much longer. In these instances you do want to be using more block antiques if you're facing a lot of, you know, Izanami and Jones. Maybe the, uh, the Itzels out there. Uh, or very tanky. And for this, I would typically recommend Eternal Dawn. But you do have Black Hat. Um, and the other Ghost Hat that benefits Ghost characters from the Antique Shop. Um, block HP will be her crystal. And when using her class set, um, I typically prefer the... I believe it's Perseverance. You know, just give her some more damage depletion. Why not? Make her extra tanky. Make her sit out there and block more, do that HP% percent damage. Up next is Uriel. Uriel is in a very interesting position just because of how a lot of teams depend on their passives. Take those away and that creates more openings for you to bring in incredible firepower. Um, push your team ahead with how she disrupts Nephilims and Vivians. Um, she's not going to stop the totems, of course. She's not going to top the Equilibrium marks, but the disruption that Nephilim and Vivian brings allows Uriel to fit in a bit more competitively on teams as that kind of support. A lot of folks do recommend using two of her just because it makes her seals more consistent um, since they do take two seals of Belinus to then create the trial of Belinus that blocks the passives from activating. With her builds, you do want to make her tanky. Um, you can give her speed HP for sure, so that she is trying to seal the opponents as quickly as possible in the round. Um, the damage build will definitely benefit from having a chain blade axe, but with Eternal Dawn, you can guarantee that she'll be out there for much longer. What's also nice is that her follow-up passive after she makes an attack will hit all of the enemy girls, which is nice for tapping those shields once they've been triggered. Finally, from the tier 1 characters, we have Izanami, who also recently came out this Xmas with Ryo. Izanami is in an interesting and awkward position because she came out dominating during her release, being able to slow down the burst that was trying to come out, you know, with Joan, Rogue, and Kratos. But with Apate's release and how tanky and sustained the medic became, her shields just were not doing much, and they hardly help with stopping the passive damage dealt by Nephilim and Vivian. Um, so when those shields are deployed, um, your damage is still going through, and then with Apate and Vivian removing energy most of the time, Zanami has a hard time even getting those shields off. Further compounded by her assist whenever an ally uses an active skill against an enemy, 
she will assist by targeting three random enemies and just doing a percent of attack. Fenrir blocks these. So later in the game, when you know Fenrir is still out there sitting on the enemy team, is an army will just rain down damage on on her and just do more damage to your own team. Um, so that's something to look out for. As an army sees a lot of play in PVE, but uh, in PVP, you will mainly see her trying to slow down and mitigate enemy burst teams that are still deploying Rogue, Jones, and Kratos. So she definitely sits at the tier one position, especially because she's also able to carry that priest set for her equipment, using the extra heals and removing the uh, enemy debuffs. Ideally, I would prefer building her tanky so that she is sitting out on the field longer. Um, she will eventually be able to cast her active skill. The shields can come in handy when trying to block, you know, Nephilim basic attacks, Apate's active skills. Um, so definitely keep her in mind. Um, she, her healing curses did also get fixed, so they stay out on the field longer. Since Nephilim and Vivian love to heal, you're going to see much more damage coming out of your Izanami. So do consider that aspect as well. She does not need to depend on her shields. You can keep her out there as a sort of healing curse bot that just spams those marks. All right, here we're getting to the middle ground, tier one and a half. Rogue is in a very interesting position. She is, you know, as a damage-based ranger girl, going to be a bit squishy. Um, she can suffer a bit if Vivian's mark falls on her, if Nephilim triggers those end of round passives too much. Rogue tends to have high attack and for good reason. Whenever she crits, the entire enemy team will take damage based on a certain amount that she critted. Um, and that just helps with highly, highly doing, you know, doing a lot of damage. To the enemy team overall this does bypass is shields this can trigger the l5 shields you're gonna see rogue doing some pretty good numbers on girls that are not ready for her is was a natural counter to her um as if you hit her shields she will not crit and since there's a lot of energy disruption going on rogue does not tend to use her active skill a lot and being very squishy with low hp low damage reduction she can get removed quite easily so this does require planning you know protecting her deploying her with vivians deploying her with a Raphael, even maybe using psychic to slow down the enemy team uh that is definitely a considerable choice um for your team build strategies ideally with her build you want to have her with as much crit as possible you can use thorn's heart you can consider using soul destruction um but you want to make sure that then for her crystal, you have crit crit. Um, of course, these antiques crystal choices can make her very squishy. So do keep that in mind. You want to have either protection or the ranger ability, uh, weakness, recognition, um, just to be able to do more damage or stay out on the field a lot longer. Next up, we have Joan, who has, as of late, become more available to players. Um, we did just have her end row event. We'll wait and see when she hits cafe. But as more players start to deploy their Jones, they will quickly notice that she depends a lot on her active skill. In this energy drain meta, you have to plan accordingly to try and keep the enemy's uh, energy drain shenanigans or their appetites away from your Joan. Speaking of such, her active skill, which will do a boatload of damage, will also then trigger her remnants to be distributed across the entire enemy team. Making her slightly weaker than the character we were expecting her to be like, but in this case, Fenrir can block those. Um, well, she could block those. That did get fixed, so I do want to note that. But then as well, when allies make their attacks, she will assist and then do damage to the enemy with little pings. Those can still be blocked. So Fenrir will opposing Fenrir's, let's say, will still be able to do a lot of damage back. So when you're building your Jones, you probably want to consider using some sort of antique that allows her to stay out on the field longer. You can use Eternal Dawn, Queen's Crown, something that gives her more HP and some sort of like damage reduction, even Burning Blades if you have it, um, to keep her out on the field. This will allow you to then use her crystal with precision attack, use holy damage attack you can use crit attack crit crit and attack 
Um, this will allow her to then balance out her damage and survivability because she will heal as enemy girls go down. That allows her to stay in the, in the fight for much longer, but of course you do need to plan out if she starts going off on Vivian's, that damage can get reflected. If she's assisting too much when there's a Fenrir out on the field almost by herself, you're going to take a lot of damage back. So keep that in mind. For her gear, uh, she is a warrior. You can have Perseverance, which I personally prefer, or Veteran, of course, if you're facing a lot of CC. Next up, your Tier 2 girls. Uh, these are incredible when you put them in the right synergy. Esau and Jacob, you will likely want to have with more Esau and Jacob, for sure. Um, you can make explosive combinations with this kind of setup. When she's used on, by herself on another team full of other L5s, she will mainly act as like an Apate Light. Um, being able to target the lowest HP girl and, you know, just reduce some energy or even petrify the front line and you know, reduce her uh, attack by a certain amount. So she's nice as a disruptor and allows for a few extra pings every time any girl dies out on the on the battlefield. Usually when you build your Esau and Jacob, you, if you want to have explosions, you probably want to use Chainblade Axe, but you mainly want to try and keep her tanky out on the field. Um, she's pretty quick, has the same speed as Apate, but using Eternal Dawn, Magic Hat, Umbrella, some tanky antiques, also boosting her attack will allow her to do more damage with those end of round explosion triggers, I, I just want to say. Next up is Mio. Mio uh, dominated the meta, of course, for a while. She's now sitting here for other tier to tier girls. Um, Mio benefits a lot from characters that have a lot of HP uh, healing because she's always going to be doing damage based off of that healing. A lot of burn will go around. Of course, if you pair her up with Empress Saint, she will perform even better since those burn marks will stay out there longer and take chunks out of the enemy. I've seen Mio's over 13 million HP and they just do incredible burn damage. You'll see enemy HP bars just slide all the way down and even bring up the, the shields at some points. Since there's a lot of debuff removal going around in the meta, you may notice that those burn marks just don't stay around as often. So you really need to plan out. You can try and have her like in an OTK team of Empress Saint or have her as a sort of front line or Nephilim tanking a girl just because of how much HP she has. Do keep that in consideration. For her build, Queen's Crown is superior. You can also consider using Eternal Dawn if you like. Um, and then HP, HP, and protection for her gear set. Next is Vera. Vera is in a very awkward spot. She really loves to support attack-based characters. Those lullaby orange shields that she deploys, they reflect attack back based on the target's attack. So if you put it on a rogue, that rogue being stacked with attack, if she gets hit by an enemy, that orange lullaby shield is going to reflect a portion of that attack back at the enemy. If you put that orange lullaby shield on an Aphylum or a Vivian, their attack, you know, can as might as well be zero. You're not going to do much damage back. Um, so Vera doesn't really fit in those tier zero girls. Apate is usually, you know, resurrecting. Um, so she barely gets to benefit from it. You may want to build her with a Fenrir's, Rose, Joan, when you're considering your Vera. For her builds, um, using Umbrella, Eternal Dawn, Fate Crystal for Energy. Deception was an interesting choice here. Um, she does speed swap, so having a speed ability on her isn't very beneficial. She's gonna take the uh, well, she's gonna take a girl on the enemy's team who's faster than her, and you know, just give her her speed and take their speed and you know, just mess around with that. It's kind of nice. Um, these marks were fixed. The Diminish, Speed Swap, and Lullaby are no longer cleansable. So you have that to look forward to. Her Diminish, allowing enemies to take more damage and also do less damage when they attack, is also quite nice. And being a priest, it is worth mentioning she has access to the Purify and the Cure from those presets. Alright, well, Lyra, um, she just keeps getting buffed, and we're all waiting in anticipation for more buffs. 
on our favorite fox girl. She can benefit a lot from having neutron blades, from being faster with deception, or using fake crystal if you just want to have fast CC. Um, Valera is still very quick. Um, being able to also then steal enemy attack, reduce their CC immunity, and then petrify or freeze girls at the most inopportune times. Now, do remember she is kind of squishy for a mage. Um, you want to kind of have her built with speed HP so she benefits from her already pretty high speed. And then, you know, consider mage shield on her. I'm um, just being able to block whole hits. It's going to be very good on Valera. And then finally, Gabriel, who did just get an Easter skin. It's worth mentioning, it's a spring tier list. Um, Gabriel has an interesting ability where when she's attacked or makes attacks, she will tag crit marks to the enemy. These crit marks take a portion of Gabriel's attack and can pop if your allies on your team hit and score a crit on the enemy girl wearing those marks. They will then pop, do some damage, and they can bypass the L5 shields. Hence why she's still here, um, lingering on the top side of the tier list. Um, those marks, since they are passive and they still stay around even if Gabriel is defeated, will allow for extra damage for damage dealing teams. Um, so we could see Gabriel make a comeback later in bursty metas, but you know, just right now, it needs a lot of planning and a lot of synergy. I would recommend using her with Kratos or even a Joan or, you know, Rogue. Um, if you're trying to deploy your Gabriel. For her build, since those marks do scale with her attack, you may want to consider using Eternal Dawn, Umbrella, you know, Echoes even. Something that will give her attack but also increase her survivability. I found Burning Blades and Eternal Dawn to be very good for her. Umbrella was also fantastic since when she does attack, she'll tag more marks well. And then having holy damage attack, precision attack, or attack attack to make use of those scaling marks will be a good idea. Her class set can be perseverance or veteran. You know, that'll be up to you. And then you can make a tanky or just go full attack with her potentials. And that's going to be a very interesting build. I'm always excited to see more about Gabriel. So that's how we have it, our spring lineup for the top end of the PvP end game meta. Of course, I'm always excited to hear what kind of teams you're looking to build. If you have plans, if you're trying to farm for future characters that may release, if you've just been rolling um, different kind of builds or ideas to combat the current tier zero or tier Vivian characters. I want to hear about it down in the comments below. So be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed this breakdown. Comment, subscribe if you have any questions. I'm always happy to hear it. Of course, uh, the meta is always changing and we do want to invoke, uh, well, look at how ulti cores are affecting the meta in the future, though for sure that's going to take a long time. So I'm very grateful for having you guys here and I hope you have a great evening. Happy gaming.